Yesterday, I jumped on a call with Wayton Pilkin and V1's Tom to talk about how to get better at Rocket League. What was supposed to happen is we were going to talk for like 30, 45 minutes, and we're going to try to make one or two separate YouTube videos out of it. After watching this video back with my editor, though, we basically decided it was all too good to cut out. So instead, I want to share with you guys the raw, uncut footage from almost an hour I talked with one of the biggest Rocket League brains and one of the best players in the world on how to get better in this game. So yes, I know this is an hour long. Long, but if you could just listen to like not even watch just queue up free play load up rings and just listen to some of the things that these guys were sharing with me it'll probably completely change how you train in this game but first if you're new to the channel i run rocket league's number one largest live coaching program the grand champ roadmap by the way at the time i'm recording this we have just 47 of 100 spots left for our season x launch so if you want to learn about how over 1,000 players have used this program to go to GC and even SSL, DM me on Discord with the keyword SSL and we can talk details about how it works. DM me through the first link in the description below. Otherwise, enjoy the video. Yo, what's up guys? Luke from the future here. I'm gonna let you check out the vid in just a second, but before we get started, I wanted to say this video is a little different, so if you do enjoy the style of like podcast content and you have ideas for how we can make it better, comment down below. Let me know if there's any way we can make these style of videos better, because I actually love doing this one. So yeah, that's all. Enjoy the video, and uh, I'll see you on the other side. Peace, guys. Well, first off, the, the, this is kind of kind of the context. Where are you guys at in terms of rank right now? Just give a give a quick intro. Okay, I haven't played in a week. Because I've been busy, but I think I left off GC2 and 3s, which is my main. GC2, got you. So that's, yeah. what is GC2 technically? Is it top 1%? I think it depends where you are in GC2. I'm pretty sure it's top 1%, yeah. That sounds um, about right, yeah. Yeah, it's like, it might be like top 0.8% or something like that. I'm not sure exactly. Depends on where you are, I'm sure. Right, right, right. And then, calm. What, what, what rank are you these days? I think we played yesterday, but... Yeah, I haven't been playing all that much rank this season, but I'm chilling around 2100 and twos and threes. Well, I think it'll be cool because I, I wanted to talk about so many topics related to just improvement in Rocket League, but I couldn't come up with one video. So this is going to be like just a mashup of every hot debated topic that people tweet at me about. Now let's kick it off with something controversial. Somebody entering Rocket League and... You know, in there in in plat and champ and GC, there's there's always the especially in the lower ranks, there's the debate mechanics versus game sense. I, I made a tweet yesterday that says you can get to grand champ in Rocket League with zero mechanics. Change my mind. What are your guys' thoughts? Depends how you define mechanics, because I don't think you can do that without being able to shoot the ball well, without being able to catch exactly, the ball, yeah. like stuff like that, which to me isn't mechanics i don't consider that like if i see someone do that i don't think they're a mechanical player or something like that but i think that's stuff that you should be able to do yeah you can you can definitely get to um to gc without any sort of flash like it, i i personally yeah. have like friends that get there with no flash like, like they they can barely air dribble they can do like a one touch air dribble they can they can dribble and flick, but they only know one type of flick, you know, but they're they're there and they're fine and they deserve to be there. Yeah, I think you might be able to get GC without aerialing. You think so? Uh, Calm, do you think you could do it? In threes, <laughs> you you maybe. 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 That's a challenge, I so. though. <laughs> in, in, I think in twos you could. I think twos would in be twos? easier. In twos? Oh, maybe. interesting. I think you could uh, 100% get to GC without aerialing. What game mode do you think is easier to get GC in? Probably threes. I think I think you tend to find, I think players tend to be better overall if they're GC in twos than if they're in GC in threes. That's interesting because I hear some people talk about like at SSL, like people say, if you want SSL, try to get in threes first. You'll say SSL yeah. in twos is brutal. I think twos is more <laughs> mechanically demanding because you're mm -hmm. forced to do individual plays more often rather than like, a solid touch playing to possession playing smart and everything you know and i'm not very uh flashy or like consistently flashy with mechanics i guess uh, and that's why i prefer threes more it just makes you use your brain right this right. is definitely a lot more cutthroat i think it's also it's like a lot more punishing if you make a mistake too so if you like yeah yeah miss a flick and then you're out of the game and your teammates are on v2 and you get scored on like that's right right up. that's not happening in threes you know maybe sometimes at my rank but you know <laughs> <laughs> well that's that's the fun part some of these <laughs> I, I, I i was hoping you guys would disagree about some stuff 
but we'll, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. That's interesting. So you so you think like generally you don't need flash. I think you said you use the word flash, right? Waiting to get to GC. Yeah, yeah. I kind of I kind of go like back and forth on how I like to talk about this topic because it's definitely something that comes up a lot. But uh, I think right now, the way I like to explain it is mechanics and game sense are both important. You need both of them to some extent. However, the like the average player prioritizes mechanics way more than game sense. So when we when like I say like you got to focus on game sense, game sense is so much more important. It can be argued that it's not so much more important, but it's just trying to like compensate for like the people that focus way too much on mechanics, I guess, because that's the average player just like from my experience focuses way more on like mechanics than game sense. You did t- you did like a little bit of a project on like in a little a little investigative work on that. No, Aiden? like I did. I, I did. I uh, I got to champ in one day on a fresh account using a piano as a controller. I had, <laughs> I had never done it. I literally busted out the the MIDI keyboard and I was just use that as my controller and got to champ in one day. My God, that's <laughs> wait. Then maybe. Co- Give Calm the keyboard and tell him he can't aerial. Maybe he can get Grand Champ. I don't know. <laughs> in my, I mean, yeah, I got the champ in one day from, and I, I think I could have kept going because I was on like a seven game win streak, but my hands were hurting because it's not <laughs> supposed to be a controller. <laughs> so yeah. I just was like, all right, you know what? I, th- I think that's a good stopping point. It was also like 8 p.m. or something, so I was getting late. <laughs> that's great. That's great. The, I guess the follow up to that is, is is this like you you think it's like an overrated, underrated thing, right? So it's like most people Yeah, yeah. I think that's it. a better way to explain it. And even then, I think a lot of people are like self-aware in that they know mechanics aren't going to help them rank up, but they still try to anyway. At least I've coached like a, cu- a couple people individually yeah, that are low ranks. <laughs> They're like, can you teach me how to air dribble? Blah, 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 blah. Like all, all these like flashy mechanics. And, and I'm like... You sure? Like that's not gonna help you rank up, but I, I'll do it if you if you still I, want to. And they're like, I yeah, I know, friend. but I just want to learn it. <laughs> <laughs> I have a friend that um, wants to get better, and I was teaching them some things, and I was like watching them play play free play, and they just kept going for like flip resets, air dribbles, stuff like that. Could hit air dribbles, you know, trying to learn how to like flip reset stuff like that. Turns out they don't know what a half flip is. <laughs> Imagine! Wow! I ma- didn't new- even know what it was. This is the meta. This is the new. <laughs> this is right. Can't half flip. Can't wave dash or anything like that. But they they know how to air dribble and they're they're working on flip resetting. And I'm like, you gotta you gotta walk before insane. you run. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's that's a, a, you're exactly right with that. A lot of people because those are all mechanics, but I think that's a more just like. You're focusing on the wrong mechanics. You yeah. Know? So like, let's say you could build a player. You could kid him out. Let's say you have five mechanics to pick from to get to grand champ. What are what 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 skills can that what what skills are you giving him? I think recoveries. So I think like being able to wave dash or half flip and knowing like how to recover it well. Um, okay. Or like have good recoveries and then being able to hit the ball hard. Literally just being able to like totally. boom it on clears <laughs> or being able to hit it hard on net. It's crazy. We Honestly, have to say I that's don't think I need more than that. <laughs> yeah yeah i mean it, it's easy if you put like pretty broad stuff but I, I was gonna put pretty broad answers too i was thinking like fast aerials in general power hits like as you said and like shooting precision because i think that's honestly shooting precision is like the hardest thing oh, to we've talked to about practice. this you know, we <laughs> talked about it dude you, you practice that for thousands of hours and you see barely any difference it's honestly it's yeah. like it's, it's almost a matter of like you're built for it or you're not because <laughs> some yeah. people like just they they are super precise with the way they do it and then other people it takes like like myself it takes hundreds of hours and you see no difference so if i had to say like five mechanics i would say probably wave dashes and then honestly being able to like catch the ball uh, you can count that as one keep the ball like, on top yeah. of the car yeah like possession and then, yeah and then honestly being able to like flick and low flick, kick, yeah. i would say both of those that would be four mechanics and then lastly i think being able to hit the ball hard and i think you can get a gc with just those yeah totally totally yeah yeah, so you're kidding them. You're giving them like recoveries, shooting, basic, basic fast aerials, and some ball control. And, and some basic, much. yeah. But it's crazy how many people all they train is redirects, like, yeah. <laughs> like, like that. Oh my god, dude! Like they just watch <laughs> calm play, and then they're like, "I want to do that." <laughs> terrible, terrible. That's something I realized is like 
watching pro play is like good to learn some things, but at the same time, it's like really bad. Like, like, <laughs> I, I know, dude. That's what I'm saying. Like the uh, stuff it so teaches you, because there's so many like subtleties I think that you don't pick up on if you don't like understand or like you see like the redirects and stuff like that, but you don't see the recoveries. You don't see the tens of thousands of hours put into like being able to boost manage, being able to shoot the ball well, stuff like that. Right. I think I, my th I have a theory. And I don't know if you guys agree or disagree, but I have a theory. And my theory is there are two phases in Rocket League now, like that with, with the way they've set up the rank system. There are like two, two like journeys you have to go through. There's the journey from start, like gold, wherever, wherever you get play, silver maybe, to GC. And then there's a completely separate set of skills, like if you want to go GC to SSL. And like getting people completely have it backwards. They think you need to learn the things that you need to learn to get SSL to get to GC, and they just skip over the things you need. That yeah, the, yeah, yeah. At the start. Totally. And I mean, I think that that's definitely has uh, some truth to it. I think one of the biggest things that's like neglected at both levels, though, is like team play and working as a team. Because I can tell you right now, like in GC2, it's not really like you hit GC and suddenly the team plays better. No, it's it's still bad. <laughs> it's like, bad. It's, it's definitely better. Like it, I'd much rather have GC teammates than like, you know, diamond teammates, you know, like even mechanics aside, I think they're just smarter. But mm. it, it's not like it's a like that cutthroat where I guess once you hit GC, suddenly people learn like every player is the same and everyone has like all these mechanics and then they need to learn the basics or they know all the basics and need to learn the flashy stuff like earlier on or, or whatever it's it's not that cut but i think there is definitely that some sort of gradual progression that lines up with what you're saying there i think it's important to to like define what the teamwork is so i think i I think when you like classify like good teammates, it's a lot of people like when they think of good teamwork, they just think like passes like that's got to be what teamwork is. But really, in general, I, I think mm -hmm. most of the time, especially what I see, like if I want a, a good teammate in rank, usually I can tell it's just their ability to like challenge for their teammates. Like, I think, yeah, that, I think the, that's like the, way, the yeah, most yeah. important thing. Exactly. The, the way I see teamwork is kind of allocating your resources properly. Um, so, for example, having one person go for the ball and one person stay back to be ready for the force. And then like another person ready in case that the first man like gets a 50 or something like there's a second man ready to follow up. It's kind of like making sure there is a defined first, second, third. And we actually have like a game plan here versus just everyone playing individually for their own comfort sake. You know, yeah, for sure. that gets me thinking because I remember we were, when we were recording um, the games with with pros, both the first time and the second time, Com, the biggest thing I noticed about playing with you was not like you're right, like not the teamwork in the sense of like passing the ball to me or centering it to me or anything like that. But it's like looking at where I'm at and saying, oh, wait, I need to buy time. I need to slow down the play. Maybe I need to do, you know, maybe maybe it's about making the play as best for the team. Even when, you know, you have a more selfish play you could you could go for in the moment. Yeah, I think that's also like 90% of what pro play is nowadays, too. It's just like basically how teams challenge, I think is what 90% of pro play is based off of. Yeah, yeah, totally. What do you what do you mean by that? Just trying to like figure out who should go a lot of the time or how you're going to force the ball. If you want to try to intentionally lose a 50, you want to send two like really fast, you want to have a close second man or you want to... Um, Insta challenge, fake challenge with second or first, knowing to slow it down if first man's demoing, stuff like that. Like that is, I think, what 90% of pro play is nowadays. I, I don't think like it's anything else besides knowing mm. how to play like a cha the challenge game well. Interesting. Yeah, I, I feel like back in the day, um, especially I, I look back at the original Dignitas roster with um, like K-Dop Turbo and Violet Panda. That was all about like, what do you do with possession when you get it? And like they they, they did so good with like infield passes and like like possession and w when they had possession, they would do something crazy with it. But now we're kind of at the point where all pro teams are capable of that sort of thing. So now it's just a matter of like, all right, how do you get percent like possession all the time? And like really the best way to achieve that as much as possible is by being careful about how you're challenging and being really like specific with it. Uh, and with how you do that as a team, not just individuals. Because then it's also about being on the same page as a team. Because like everybody's individual skill is so high that maybe mm -hmm. the places that you're gaining your actual competitive edge is in how you combine your skill, like how you time your challenges, how you fake for the guy behind you, more so than like the just the sheer like outskill them that we used to yeah. see back in the day, totally. where some people would just out they just out mech you. We don't see as many of those plays. Uh, granted, we still we still see some. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the mechanics are especially at the highest level, and uh, I'm curious your thoughts on this too, Com. Uh, like since you play in it, but I feel like a lot of pros are capable of a lot of the same things. Of course, there's some flashy stuff that that people score, but that's not really the difference makers at pro play. It's more so like just you know everyone's capable. Every pro player is capable of 
doing like the basics and it's about how you how consistent you are with those basics and how you like work as a team to put yourselves in those positions rather than what you do when you get in the positions. Because, I mean, once you get to that position, I feel like a lot of pros are capable of pretty similar stuff. Oh, yeah. I, I, there's like almost no difference, I think, mechanically in a lot of pros. There's a few pros that have slightly better mm -hmm. mechanics, I'd say. Like, you know, you're like Beastma, for instance. He has, I think he has slightly better mechanics Insane. than like almost every single pro yeah he's he's crazy but even then most pros can do what he wants or, or what he can however i think a lot of it is a like a stylistic thing so a lot of the stuff beast mode does i could try to do i have pretty good mechanics for even for a pro even though mm -hmm. i'm not quite quite at that level but i a lot of the time i just choose not to instead i'd rather yeah. take a 50 go for a demo stuff like that and try to kind of like wear the uh the opposition down whereas he goes for slightly like higher risk higher reward plays and i think that's the main difference like in individual play styles of pro play is what your risk tolerance is and um, y your individual like uh, not ability, but style. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I think energy is a perfect example of that because I feel like back in the day, it was heavily weighed on individual talent. Um, and like I'm talking like way back, like season four, for example, Squishy being on cloud nine and everything. He like helped out cloud nine so much because he was so far above everyone else in terms of flashy mechanics and like people not being able to read him. Right. Uh, nowadays, you look at NRG, they were like on top of NA for so long. And then suddenly now they're like not even making spring major. And there was no roster change. They literally, like Justin said on Twitter, they were trying out a new style and a simple play style change is what caused their downfall. Like they, they're still the same talent, same individual talent, but the play style made all the difference really. And yeah, and you see, well, you see all these other teams rise up. Com, what do you, what, what is your position playing against them? And what, what, do you, what do you think has maybe changed? And Because we've seen some major moves, not just NRG, but just like the pro scene in the past, I, I want to say three months, that like we really didn't see it. We didn't see as many movements as we've seen recently. What's the, what's Are you talking the, what, about like like roster moves? Not so much roster moves, just uh, teams, just 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 the change in the state. I mean, we, we, there's like this season of two years where it's just NRG on top, right? Right. But now we've seen, I, I feel, I don't know, looking in, maybe maybe you see it differently. I, th I feel like there's been moves with different teams climbing the top five, top six that maybe weren't, and, and players as well. Kind of, I, I think the only like real team that has kind of like done that, I think is us, like making like a complete, like, you know, kind of coming out of nowhere once you picked up East and stuff like that. But in general, I think, except for NRG, I think most of the teams have remained the same. So I think you still have FaZe or um, even like back when they were like Peeps, I think they were like a top six team pretty much. Um, yeah, yeah. But of course, they made like two roster moves since then, something like that. And now they're still like around the top. And then you have your space station who's been around the top for years as well. They made it. They made a move still around the top. And then same thing with G2, which has always been there, of course. It's kind of like all of those top teams, like we can, anybody can kind of win most of the time on the day. And I think it's just kind of been like those top four, top five, and then NRG, of course, being like the only ones that really fell off, um, just shuffling around for a bit. Interesting. So you just feel like all the other teams have risen a bit and kind of just NRGs and finally have some competition maybe. Yeah, for sure. I think, I think all the other teams have gotten better and then... The meta's definitely like shifted a lot to where, like I said, it's a, it's a lot more about challenges now, stuff like that, and doing stuff off the ball with like demos, fake challenges, boost steals, a lot of stuff like that. So what's the difference then in your eyes between the things that maybe somebody watching right now can focus on that are really going to serve them in ranked versus like the things that you have to focus on? Like, are there differences in the things you're thinking about these days versus like if somebody just came to you and was like, I, I want to get 2K MMR, are there different things you'd tell them? Yeah. So like at my level, a lot of it is about breaking down like the other team's rotation. So whether that be like a demo on defense or offense. And there's like certain times where I'll like cheat out to go for mid boost, stuff like that. So we get boost on on defense. There's a lot of things like subtle things like that that I have to focus on that I don't think you really have to in ranked. I don't I don't think it's like you have to make sure you're taking the mid boost, stuff like that, or you're making sure that you have like really good ways of like getting the ball off the opponents to your teammates. I don't I don't feel like that's as big of a deal in ranked. I think most of the time in ranked it's about taking Taking the ball when you can get it, like if you're in rank threes, if you're trying to get like 2k MMR and then making just like a pretty good play on it. I, I don't think like the overall pressure, like boost stealing bumps, like our bumps and stuff. I, I don't think that's as prevalent in ranked, especially because you don't have the same teamwork if you're like solo. Uh, maybe you can't capitalize it on, on it as much when you don't have the comms going. Yeah, usually mm -hmm. like when I'm like solo queuing threes, I just kind of like play 
I just try to play super solid and then take my chances when I give them or get them. So I just try to focus more really on not getting scored on than trying to score. Kind of like risk aversion more so than like, you know, playing playing the all in, the all or nothing place. Yeah, because I can't control what my teammates are going to do or anything like that. Might have no chem. They might be on the uh, the lower end of teammates, so I'll say it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And I don't want their mistakes to cost like a, a game. So I'll just try to like play around them and make sure that nothing bad comes of that. And then I just try to take my chances when I get them, like I said. So if I get a chance to make a play, then I'll try to make a play and see if I can score off it or something. Interesting. Interesting. What's been working for you lately in ranked waiting? Do, do you still even get much time to time to play? I know content's ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, I get time to play usually. I mean, this past week I've played almost nothing. However, I don't I don't really grind ranked anymore. If anything, I'm grinding my brain because I still analyze high level uh, RLCS just because I think it's fun and it's fun to make videos about it when I like discover something, you know. But when it comes to my own games, I kind of just like, you know, play for fun. Uh, sometimes I'll try and implement some things I learn in RLCS, but I mean, <laughs> it's kind of hard to bring that into yeah. ranked. <laughs> Doesn't usually work out the same. Yeah, that's, that's kind of the way I view ranked, just mostly for fun. Fair, fair, fair. Well, on the subject of like... RLCS changing over time and you have like they have these different things focusing on now I'd be interested to know because you guys both have like different probably have different experiences with this but with how far the games come going back to like the talk the talk about mechanics as well what do you guys think you would do differently now like let's say let's say your goal is to go pro or just to get just get cracked at the game and to improve and you're starting from ground zero let's say you got sent back three years are you doing anything differently let's say you lost all your mechanics now you have to rebuild them all what what are you doing first to 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 get to get your mechanics up and to get like way ahead of the curve like what is there anything you do differently that we know now that's interesting um if i were like trying to get my mechanics back i definitely don't think i'd be playing ranked or anything i think i would 100 percent just be like if i'm purely just trying to get mechanically better i think i would just be grinding stuff out for free play so i think the the method that i usually would use is if i want to learn like an individual mechanic then i'll just practice it. so say i want to learn flip resets i'll practice flip resets a bunch and then usually I'll, I'll stop and then just go back to like playing normally and then i'll maybe like a day later or something like that check if my flip resets are improved or I'll try them again, stuff like that. I, I just try to like work on mechanics individually a little bit. And then most of the time I just kind of like, most of my time in free play is just spent like hitting the ball around and just trying to like overall improve, not really focus on individual things, I guess. I think that's where most of my time goes but then every every once in a while like if i need to learn a specific mechanic then i'll do it I'll, I'll like try to grind it out so you would just really focus on speed and just and just and just rep free play just get get tons of reps in yeah for sure i, I don't feel like ranked isn't important for getting good mechanics it's important for figuring out how to like implement the mechanics so like you you can get really good at flicks and and free play but it doesn't matter if you don't know how to time them or you don't know how to beat challenges and stuff like that in a game and you just get dunked in your net every time true so you're you're let's say you're starting from zero right and you've got to build out you've, you've got to get back to pro or you've got to get back to high level what's what's the program for young com look like you know sanity aside and you just like i just want to be the best right five years ago it's probably something like 80 20 I, I think free play hours are way more important than ranked especially it depends really? on what level you're at 80 20 especially if you're trying to become a pro learning how to like the time that you're spending learning how to outplay champ threes probably isn't going to apply to learning how to outplay pros yeah <laughs> i i honestly agree with that though i mean I, I think one of the interesting things about it is mechanics there's not really a shortcut to learning mechanics it's really just grind 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 grinds you don't really I don't know, i've never met anyone that just suddenly something clicked mechanics wise and they could just air dribble and flip reset on command it's it's a slow grind process you know when it comes to game sense that's something you can kind of mold after you've like gotten to a certain level of mechanics but like your game sense is bad you can kind of mold into like a different style and like have it work in a different mode uh like for example we've seen so many um top ones players where they climb the ladder through ones and then they move to threes and they're they're gods you know uh Jorius, for example Monkey Moon, for example, a lot of people consider him the best player in the world. Uh, First Killer, even. He, he was like a, a ones main, I believe, or a ones grinder back then. Even Yukon, you, you grind a ones a decent bit. And what ones does is it really grinds your mechanics. It's really like mechanically intensive because it's all about out playing your opponent and playing smart at the same time, obviously. But the smarts doesn't really convert. And even though the smarts from ones doesn't convert as smoothly to threes, you can take the mechanics with you and then like kind of converting your game sense is a much easier process than converting your mechanics is, I guess, because that's just slow. That's just you, it takes time and there's not really a shortcut to it. Yeah, I, I agree. I think if you're like starting out, if you have to learn, you know, just mechanics or like game sense to start i think you 100 percent should learn mecha uh, mechanics first that's a, i bet a lot of people would be surprised to hear that though 100 it, uh, it depends on what your goals are really it, so if that your goals true. are going pro then i mean 
yeah, mechanics kind of more important, I'd say. But I'm not making YouTube <laughs> videos for people who are wanting to go pro personally. So that's why I never say practice mechanics. I'm making people f videos for people who want to rank up. And I mean, game sense, that's just the easiest way to rank up. Like chances that's are true. That's true. Because I don't really. There are a lot of layers to this. I'm trying to wrap my head around. <laughs> I don't really think anymore, like in the sense of like. I personally never like thought that your rank matters in the sense that like who cares if you're 100 MMR higher or lower. What really you should be focusing on is whether or not you're improving. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. I think that's, that's, that's 100 no matter what, what I rank think is at. the most important thing. Yeah, so when I think of like how do I want to improve or like how do I want to get good, I think the best thing you can do is just get your mechanics really good because like you said, it's a slow burn. Like you, you got to learn the mechanics and it's like, yeah, it's there's, slow. There's, there's no, no shortcut. Short you, you have to keep grinding that. If you're not grinding that, you're not like... You and, will get hard stuck, I think. And I think game sense is stuff that's something that it really just comes from playing. So it's just like pattern recognition. You find yourself in the same spots that you found yourself in other games before. And if you made a mistake there, now you know what to fix. Yeah, yeah. I, I like that word pattern recognition because you're right. It's a, you just you recognize the situation. And you're like, I'm not going to make the same mistake I did last time. But there are like there are like three levels to it. it it's kind of funny because at this at the start at the, <laughs> at the start of the vid, we're all like people are focusing way too much on mechanics. And now we're like, <laughs> but if you want to go pro, you need to learn mechanics. Yeah, yeah, but at yeah. the same time, it, it's about focusing on the right mechanics. It's a tough spot to be in for us YouTubers, I guess, because I mean, I, I think it was it was a few months ago when apparently Jack, he's like grinding YouTube in a video at some at one point in one of his gameplay videos. He said, like, if you're deciding whether to grind uh, mechanics or game sense, uh, my answer is always mechanics. And I was like, yeah, that makes sense. He's he's a professional player, you know, and it, we kind of just covered why that is. If you're if that's your goal to become a professional, then, yeah, I'd agree with that. But I got so many people messaging me like, see, he disagrees. But it's like, no, he's, <laughs> he's talking about something completely different. I mean, I'm making videos to try and help people rank up. And if that's what your goal is, then which it is for most people, then, you know, game sense is like that's a shortcut, you know, it's the easiest way. Yeah. yeah, it's the easiest way. It's the easiest way to rank up is improving your game sense. But if you're going long term grind to go pro, then you have to train mechanics. So the long term is like, look, ultimately, if you want to be able to compete, you have to have the speed, right? You have to have the speed, you have to have the consistency. And that's just, a, that it takes reps, it takes time. Yeah. The biggest misconception is mechanics are not a shortcut. If you want a shortcut to ranking up, don't grind mechanics. Exactly. 100%. <laughs> that is yeah. not a shortcut. Start moving back post. That eh? is a long, long, long <laughs> rep. <laughs> Start going back post. <laughs> Yes, please. <laughs> that will make me happier in my games too. If people do that. Wait, and since ever since he dropped the vid like one or two years ago, do people rotate back post now or now? I I don't know. I mean, I it's never gonna be perfect, but I, I I don't remember how it was beforehand. So who knows? Maybe I do get people in my games sometimes. Like you're the reason I'm GC, and then I end up losing to them, and I'm like, well, well, this is I awkward. Yeah, this <laughs> I get I get yeah. the I get the same thing. Wait, and you can't imagine. <laughs> I'm sitting here like I can't relate, but that's all right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, it's it's so funny. Like even the rotate back post thing. Like thinking about game sense or game sense. There's there's so many like caveats to it. Like at pro play now, right, rotating right. back post like isn't even a thing. Oh, it's not even a thing. Yeah, it's not a thing anymore. At pro play. <laughs> Really? It used to be that was what like defined the yeah, like that was what everybody was supposed to do. That's how you're supposed to rotate. But now pro play is all about cutting in and challenging for your teammates. Yeah. Seriously. It's like never, never you like supposed to rotate anymore. There's no like you have to learn the fundamentals and then learn when to break the fundamentals, but pro play is just so far above that. that right. The fundamentals become a blur and it's just like, all right, what's most efficient? What makes sense here? Yeah. And it, I think going back post is like the perfect first step to learning how to rotate, and that's why 100%. I prioritize it so much. And if you don't learn that foundation first then you don't learn when to use it and when to not use it you're just kind of rolling the dice and seeing what works and you're not going to learn as fast i find when coaching people it's like the way i frame it is it's like if you give them principles it makes the game easier to understand and then at least they have a groundwork to to exactly to, to think off of and to modify but if you know For some sure. some people are playing rocket league and they have just no concept of any base principle at all. So every decision is a new decision. And when anything could influence your decision in Rocket League and you have no like underlying truth about like, okay, I'm gonna rotate back post if I'm rotating back, that's when you get into like this habit of like, you're just picking random decisions and you're not actually learning anything. 
yeah, right, right. I agree on that. Well, that's uh, that's interesting. All right, so cool. So long term, eighty percent free play, twenty percent game sense. Because at the end of the day, like if you want to get, let's say SSL, it's like the 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 outplays you're getting on the C twos and the C threes would probably be saved by a higher level defender anyway. So you might as well just train the mechanics and practice them on the better player at a later time. And again, that's sanity aside. Sanity aside. That San- <laughs> sanity aside. <laughs> you might go crazy if you actually try to do that. Big asterisk. Well, some people love free play. So like to, to some people, maybe it's reassuring to hear like somebody say, like, if you want to get to the top, top mechs are important. I think this season, like I said, I've been playing much rank this season. I probably have spent 80 percent of my time like this season in free play. That, that's kind of surprising to me. Was it always that way when you were on when you're like in bubble as well, like in the bubble scene and, and on the way up? Not as severe. I've never been like huge into ranked as much as much as other people, especially I, I think it's largely because as a pro, I have access to like professional scrims, you know, and it's like I would get so much There's, more from those and yeah, a lot more fun so much more valuable. <laughs> and then it's like i also at the same time we have like a very particular style and stuff that we work on as a team and i'm not going to go play ranked and fuck up my play style and stuff like that yeah just spot on am dude. i supposed to swear my bit no nah, you're <laughs> not nah, it's all good <laughs> all right so no that's super interesting i love i love to hear the different positions because i think it's always hard especially when you're talking when when when, when we're making youtube like people when people watch youtube videos oftentimes there's a disconnect between the person watching and the person making Making the video and it's it's, it's tricky because sometimes I'll make a video and I'm you know I try to be clear like this this tip or this advice that I'm giving is meant to apply to diamond champ and GC players specifically and then higher rank players will tell me oh this is no good this makes no sense I'm way better listen to me <laughs> yeah and I'm like it, it, oh my god it all it, it all and it goes the other way you know and, and vice versa yeah I remember when I first posted the back post video I got like SSL didn't exist back then but it, they were like GC's telling me like dude this is not good don't be telling like the, the this this would never work blah 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 and it's like this video is not made for you all right (laughs) (laughs) so so do you guys think do you think there are like certain checkpoints that people have to hit like uh it'd be probably good to learn this first it'd be probably good to learn this second or is it more just like might as well just train it all and and just get started early like we said at the start like i think it's the basic mechanics that matter like so i think i think learn the basic mechanics and up until you get like gc and then maybe you gotta learn to aerial at that point i don't know and then at that point it's probably where you start maybe learn to aerial at gc wow (laughs) maybe (laughs) maybe thoughts waiting (laughs) i I think i think you can learn to aerial before gc i'm gonna go out on a limb and say (laughs) yeah you are allowed to learn to aerial yeah, 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 of course, but <laughs> don't go overboard with that is what I'd say. I think learn how to fast aerial, of course, and learn how to hit the ball hard in the air, but don't learn how to flip reset, please. I, I swear yeah, that's reset has ruined yeah, yeah, yeah. the game. Everybody that I've met like below GC or even in some in GC are just obsessed with flip resets. <laughs> Seriously, bro. Actual oh obsession. God. Like, like Actual it's, <laughs> it's it's crazy. They, they, like that's how they define whether you're good or not is like if you can flip reset or no. They're not even good resets <laughs> Actually, as well. It's dude. just like, no, do they you don't obtain a reset? Do you obtain? It's pretty much, do you <laughs> hit the ball with all four wheels? And it's like, okay, you must be insane at the game or something. <laughs> oh my God. It's it's ridiculous, dude. I, I remember I made a video like testing if people could tell the difference between a grand champion in SSL and a pro. And like people sucked at that. <laughs> dude, I did like a I remember they can all flip that reset. Like, They're basically the same skill. Like, turbo Pulsa as a grand champion. I remember you had guess, Turbo like, in there. Yeah, dude, they guessed like they guessed me as like higher than Turbo Pulsa. And it's like, dude, this makes maybe that's no the truth. Sense. That's, that's <laughs> what I was like mentioning earlier. Like I watched that video and it was like, that's what I was talking about. Like the subtleties that you don't see. Like when you right, watch right. play is he's not going to make a mistake. He has perfect recoveries. He's able to do all of the basics extremely, extremely well. But he didn't flip reset. But so he didn't hit a flip reset. Well, that's in the why clip. people guessed GC. <laughs> and they probably would have guessed Champ, honestly. Yeah. That's funny. It's funny. But hey, it, kind of, it depends on how you look at it. Because for the people watching who are tuned in, they know don't train flip reset. You know, while everybody else is training flip resets, they're getting distracted. They're getting blinded by the light. Meanwhile, whoever watched this video is going to go practice flicks, and then they're going to dominate. And they're gonna come back and leave a good comment for sure. Also, musty <laughs> flicks too. People are obsessed with musty flicks. Yes, but. so true, yeah, yeah. so true. The off the wall stuff is actually kind of cracked in pro play. People are doing that so much now. Yeah, oh yeah, the off wall musties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, because no, the I lift think... you can get on the ball, and then you can continue flying vertically as well. After it's like the perfect yeah dude. transition. Yeah. I didn't think it would be so competitively viable, but it actually is. I, I saw the potential. I've been practicing this for years. Probably, I've probably been practicing the off wall musties specifically for at least two years now. Because that scoot, Crazy. man, ahead of the curve curve. 
yeah you, you just get so much power with it right 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 and you can follow it up as well you get like a nice height change you can follow it up it's always the funniest part too in pro play it's like the same thing that happened with flip resets too to where like you know people like go for a flip reset and then fake the flip reset and then it went where people mm -hmm. were go for the reset fake the flip reset and then go for an air dribble and then they mm -hmm. fake faking the reset and it's like there's so many yeah. mind games <laughs> like that goes back and forth man <laughs> It's now the same thing is happening with like the, the off-ball musties. Like you can just yeah. fake going for a musty and then land and people and then people you will drop, defend yep. the musty. Yeah. Yeah, yep. and you just and then it's you just start happening. a dribble and you're like right next to the net. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it, and then it eventually balances out to where it's just like kind of like ceiling shots, I guess. Uh where, where you just like either figure out how to challenge them and shut them down early. And I feel like ceiling challenges uh, are kind of a way to do that. And even then, like you kind of learn it, it balances out where like half the time they do like an early ceiling shot, so half the time they do a delayed. And I mean, even to, in today's pro play, you don't even really get the chance for that. But yeah, it all like it all balances out. You know, it, it might be like super crazy at the start, but it'll it'll reach some equilibrium until like another another crazy mechanic comes yeah. out. Okay, well, I have a, I have a couple specific like uh, like uh, hot topics, so we can go, we just go rapid fire to close this one out. Speed flips necessary, not necessary. I would say once you get like GC, you should learn them probably, but they're also really easy to learn. Like, I, I, I feel like just, just you, it's one of those, like a half flip where you just have to grind it out. Just hold arrow right or left and then do like a reverse half flip and boom, that's it. Mm -hmm. And then it's, all you have to do uh, is you have to is the hard part with The it. precision is, I remember yeah. I, I could do a speed flip pretty early on, but, but like land, learning right? to get it really precise and everything to like be able to use it on a kickoff or whatever and like be fine consistently. I remember pr practicing that on kickoffs. I lost so many kickoffs before mm -hmm. I like actually got comfortable with it, you know? So you can definitely learn it quick, but the precision is the hard part. Yeah, I think um, just spend like 30 minutes to an hour a day like practicing it and then you're good. Yeah, yeah. Time, but it's but it's worth it though. You think it's worth it? Like something at, that people at, should. like the GC level, I think you should. I, um, I think it is worth it, yeah. Because even then, speed flips like in general, um, sometimes I do like a speed flip midair and then I'll like uncancel for like a cool little like flick at the end of an aerial or something you know what i mean it, it's used for different types of things it's not just like its own mechanic you can use it in different scenarios for different mechanics i guess that's yeah, very sure. true looking back i am very happy I, I and honestly i wish i would have learned sooner speed flips it's the thing like speed flips things like air roll like i wish i would those are the things where it's like you're right it's like not hard to do in theory but it just takes a lot of time to refine so yeah. it's like kind of just get on the train early you think yeah for sure i i think yeah no, no better time than now to start and just practice a little each time each day and it's really not that hard to get down i remember what uh i think it was when first musty first made his video talking about it that's when i first started trying it and i was like dang like this is super cool like i, I was like one for ten on the kickoffs because like I would either whiff the ball or I'd get like a perfect touch to the side and like score a kickoff goal. And I was like, yo, that was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> that's kind of what motivated me to do it. Nowadays, people just speed flipping is just like a normal thing. So you can't really do that specific thing anymore. But you kind of have to keep up. You, you kind of have to speed flip, not for the sake of getting an advantage, but to keep up with everyone else. I also think it's like like half flips or wave dashes. The reason why I think it's so easy to learn is because it's it's like a separate mechanic without the ball. It's just it's just car control like. Well, mm -hmm. the reason why flip resets are so hard to learn is because you have to both know how to control your car and how to control the ball. But like these, yeah, these ones yeah. where it's just like this, I, I think it's just you just hop in, grind out the, the mechanic, like get the muscle memory down and you're set. Yeah. Yep. And for that reason, it's probably even more like valuable or it, it's even probably more worth it. It's a good time investment because it's like realistically, yeah, it's, way easier. it's yeah, it's not going to take and you use it all the time. Yes. Oh, so yeah. For mo especially like if you're going to play ones and twos. Oh, my God. So I'm speed flipping all the time. Like yeah, while picking up yeah. boost. Yeah, all of it. Whereas I like it just to see becomes your normal flip instead yeah. learning how to musty flick and and flip reset and they go for it one in every 10 games and they miss it. Yeah, <laughs> like that's why I value like the recovery mechanic so high is because you're yeah. you're gonna wave dash. You're gonna speed flip. You're probably you might half flip most of the time in like almost every game. Mm. I think resoundingly, like everybody I talked to, they're like, yeah, recoveries are super important, but I don't think people actually realize like, like the scale, like no matter what mechanic you go for, you're going to be recovering after the mechanic. So like yeah, of course. people put in, you know, 10 times the amount of time on air dribbles and recoveries only happen, you know, and, and they happen literally 10 times as, mu as much. One thing I did realize in, in the 30 days of playing with pros is just like the overall speed and recoveries. People think recoveries just means wave dashes and half flips. Oh my God, no. There are so many aspects to recoveries. Like, can you land on the wall properly? Can you hold power side for the right amount of time? Like, are you super efficient Get pads. with your turns? Yeah. Get the small pads on the, on the recoveries too. 
Yeah. Like totally. that's that's stuff, yeah, I'm sure that you've seen, like, especially like in the in the twos lobbies you've been playing in. If somebody overcommits out of the game, you don't just get the chance to catch the ball and go dribble their teammate. It's like they're instantly on you, demoing you. They're back. Uh, it's like yeah, insane. Counting from behind. Yeah. And that's the thing where it's like, because if you have the mechanics, then at that point, you can teach the game sense. But like, if somebody's just out of the play forever, it's like, they might know game sense wise, what's the best decision, but you just can't get away with anything because you have no, you have no mechanics. Yeah. Okay. N n next topic. I think we're all, we're all in agreement. Warming up necessary or, or, or nonsense. I think it's to your individual preference. If you feel like you want to warm up or you need to warm up, I think you can. I personally sometimes don't, but I, I think it's personal preference. Okay. Do you, you warm up for RLCS, right? Yes. Okay. Good. You don't risk it there. You don't risk it there. <laughs> Some teams don't. <laughs> really? Some teams don't? Who? No way. I, I don't know if I should be saying it, but we did. <laughs> no, nah, yeah, fine, it. fine, fine, fine. Yeah, okay. My answer, I think, is absolutely necessary. Uh, it's just a matter of how much you care. Warming up will always be helpful in my eyes. It's just a matter of how much you care. For me personally, I play ranked for fun, and even then, even if I was like, well, I wanted to grind ranked, at the end of the day, it's just ranked, and it's not that big of a deal. So I might do like a little free play warm up or something and then go in. Mm. However, if I'm prepping for something that actually matters, I'm going to do my full on morning routine, you know, go for a walk, make sure I'm eating right and everything, everything I possibly can, because I did that for a week and I am 1 million percent convinced that makes a massive difference. So it's obviously going to be different for everyone and not everyone should have the same warm up routine or morning routine, whatever. But that is no joke. That makes a massive difference, uh, at least in my performance. I, yeah, so I agree. I think whatever you're doing, you should just be consistent with it. Mm -hmm. um, so that way you're always in the, the right headspace whenever you're playing. Um, that's one thing like in particular that we focused on like a lot like the v1 specifically is focused on with hiring us a sports psychologist and hiring us like a yeah. personal trainer stuff like that is if you feel good you play good um, and, totally, confidence totally. and that, that's exactly that's that's the end goal so you might have different methods to achieving that but at the end of the day like my morning routine that i had i felt good going into rocket league and that's all that mattered for some people it might just be like sit outside for like 10 minutes and then if that's what makes you feel refreshed and like you want to play rocket league right now and like you're gonna pop off then so be it that's that's your thing for me i think it takes like a little bit more like to get it going and like it, i my entire like morning routine matters a bit more for me. So warming up, it's in my eyes, it's always going to be like extremely helpful. It just may be different per person. And also if you're just going to play ranked, then it just might not be worth it. <laughs> it's because yeah. it's just, yeah, ranked. I agree with all that. Go watch the full video if you want to see the full results. But what are what are like some some highlights, some things you can maybe highlight that surprised you that actually did improve your performance? Maybe from that and then comment, you can even speak to some of your experience too. Like when you say like, you know, like having that like, like pre -game, or game day ritual or war, like morning yeah. routine, like what surprised you that had an impact? What seemed to have an impact? It did many different things. First one, it made everything that I was doing seem so much more important, but not in a nervous way, in a way of like, nothing else matters right now. I'm, this is my one true objective. You know, like everything I did like this morning is leading up to this moment. And it wasn't like a nervous way. It was just straight up like a, a getting pumped way, you know? Uh, and I just used it in ranked, <laughs> you know, it's like I wasn't pre prepping for RLCS, but it's still like it put me in that mindset, like everything I did this morning had a purpose for this. Let's make it count. You know, it, it gave a purpose behind it. On top of that, it just straight up cleared my mind. I had a productive morning. And for me, at, personally, when I'm productive, it kind of justifies whatever I'm going to do next, like whether it's productive or not. You know, because I've already been productive this morning with this and I genuinely believed I was productive. So now I can just focus on this and I don't have any other worries. You know, I can set my phone aside. I already took care of everything, took out the trash, whatever it is. There's nothing else on my mind. All I'm focused on is my screen right in front of me. Mm, it's more about like, it's more about like the mental triggers then for you, like the focus aspect of it. Totally, totally. The focus. Yeah. Like when I think of warming up now, I used to think of like in-game warm up, you know, nowadays I think of warming up as like mental warm up. Because that makes so much more of a difference than in game warm up. In game warm up definitely makes a difference for me, but like compared to IRL stuff, like it, it's it's no competition. I yeah no I can I completely agree. I think confidence is just so important um, at any level, and and then at the pro level. So like I said, we had the, the sports psychologist, the personal trainer, stuff like that, yeah. and then like what you mentioned, waiting. I've just been trying to like focus on like taking care of all my other responsibilities and whatnot before I play. Totally. So I can totally focus on Rocket League, nothing else. Mm -hmm. um, and I think those have all like really impacted my play. And I think I've played like a 
a lot more confidently. And when you're playing confidently, I think you like see the game better. You're going to make the right play a lot of the time since, you know, a lot, a lot of the time it's like your, your gut instinct is going to be right. You've been playing the game for thousands of hours. Like it's just, you know, you just have to do it. <laughs> you have to not second guess yourself. So I think confidence is so important, especially in Rocket League, because it's a game like it's, it's less, you know, like long drawn out and strategical. It's all it's very in the moment. Yeah. Instant decisions like you, you don't get a chance to think. Yeah, so so that mental sharp. I didn't think about that. That that quote stuck out to me. It's more about mental warm up than in game warm up. Mm -hmm. I like mm -hmm. I like that. I like that a lot. I know I mentioned it in the video, but um, when it comes to physical sports, you know, you definitely need a physical warm up. But when it's Rocket League, it's it's all mental anyway. You like it, yeah. you can stretch your fingers or whatever. But I mean, <laughs> it's just it's all in your head. You know, at, right. at least at that point, you know, when you're playing Rocket League, it, at, once you reach a certain point, you're not thinking, press the X button, press the circle button, press the triangle button. You're thinking, rotate my car this way, tilt my car forward, roll this way, you know, yeah. it, it's there's no bridge there. So it's all in your head. And then physical. I would go even further. I feel like at my level, that's not even like anything I think of. I just think like, OK, double tap this or. Oh, yeah. Like, that. That, like yeah. it eventually just becomes so muscle memory that you're just thinking about the mechanic itself. Yeah. Not you're staring at the other team and you're like looking at where their movement is going to be and predicting their car path. Yeah, that's something too. like I'd say I'm probably looking at the other team 90 percent of the time when I play. Not the, not my, not the ball or my own car, and that that amazes people. And the only how do you think you uh, from my experience? Obviously, I'm not there. I'm 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 at like thirty percent, twenty percent, and it's just a matter of like you just have to be so confident with your mechanics. Is that what it is that allows you to be able to do that? You just have to be so so comfortable. Yeah, it's, it's just that I have thousands of hours and so much experience with like all of the ball control and car control and stuff that yeah that's not even something i like think about anymore it's all just second nature if i'm like racing someone to the ball i'll glance to see where the ball is and like in my head i'm instantly thinking what time i'm gonna get there how fast i'm gonna be going what kind of touch i'm gonna get how i'm gonna try to do whatever and then like i'm while i'm looking at the opponent i'm kind of like thinking of those things and then next i'm thinking okay how do i beat the opponent here do i have them beat are they closer Am I going to be able to dodge them so I don't demo when I get, or get demoed when I take the challenge? Or how am I going to recover after I challenge? It's like all those things are like running through my head as I as I like look at the opponent or like so like that. And it's all like a bunch of split second decisions that are just like instinctual because I have so many thousands of hours playing. It's the pattern record. It's like um, I, I, there's like the saying. It's like a a novice chess player thinks one one thinks about the current move. A, a, a like like a master chess player thinks about three to four moves. A grandmaster chess player is already calculated the next eight moves they're thinking about how their next move is going to affect the ninth or the tenth move out i mean that yeah that's where i got the term pattern recognition from is because i play i play chess so i'm pretty pretty good at chess so that's like oh go a, figure a lot of, there we yeah, go a lot of the stuff yeah uh there's actually like a bunch of things that i've taken from chess and kind of like applied to rocket league like quotes like that or another like popular quote is um that oftentimes the threat is stronger than the execution so a lot of the times you know whenever oh, i'm like dribbling the that. ball yeah it's like Shooting it right now is not the most effective thing I can do. Instead, I should wait to shoot, not limit my options, and make sure that like my opponent is worried. And then, yeah. then when I get the chance, then I take the shot or I try to do something. Oh, it's kind of interesting. Yeah. That's, that's how that's how reframe. mechanics in general evolve. You know, like we were just talking about how like stuff kind of goes back and forth. Like the musty thing, the threat of the musty is more effective than the musty itself because right. they're gonna try and jump up to save it, but then you don't do anything. And you just the only reason line. dropping it down was effective was because they were scared of what you're about to do. Right. Yeah. And that's also why musties aren't great at diamond because they, they don't, they don't think you can must. <laughs> yeah, they're not going <laughs> to understand that there's even a threat there. They're just it's challenging. So funny. They're just going. Like, when, when I do play against like lower ranked players, like a lot of the stuff that I do would work on pros and it just does not work. On them. <laughs> like dude, the amount of times seriously. I would go for like the fake flip reset and then go for like the delayed touch, like that kind of shot that works on pros 90% of the time. But whenever I try that against like a lower yeah. ranked player, they, the, the thought of a flip reset never occurred to them. So it's called it's, it's so what's sad. called the champ. It's you what's called. Meta think. <laughs> it's the champ two difference. Com the C2 yeah, death. For real. <laughs> My God. That's hilarious. So, so, so match up on calm more or less. You, you heard it here first. If you want to beat calm, the key is to be like 300 or 400 MMR below him. You actually don't want to go pro. You want to just assemble a team like b slightly below bubble skill level, and then you could take down V1. Oh, for sure. <laughs> well, there are, there are a million other topics I want to talk about. We covered basically mechanics top down. We covered training. We covered a bunch of stuff. Wait and calm. Thanks so much for coming on, guys. That was sick. Yeah, of course. For sure, bro. Thanks for Let's having me. That was a lot Thanks of fun. Thanks for having me.